Hey there, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Just Cause Robotics. Today I'll be talking about some incremental changes and updates to the design of my Antweight Mini Mulcher. I also want to talk about good strategies for testing and iterating on robot designs in general. I'll be talking through my thought process for each change. I had been designing and making changes in one Fusion 360 file, and I had randomly called that version 0.5 since I'd made a number of different attempts beforehand. When I needed to make a large volume of changes, however, I split it off into a version 0.6 file just in case I broke everything and needed to go back. So here's the list of what's changed so far and why for version 0.6. Number 1. Link. I was forced to use an XT30 power link due to complete lack of space for a switch besides the FingerTech switch. FingerTech switch is a great option for beetles, but it's absurdly overkill for an ant given it can take over 60 amps continuously, and at $19 for two of them plus shipping in the US, that's almost 10% added to the entire cost of the robot, which seemed a bit too steep. It is a good option though, and if you already have one on hand, I would definitely use it. Number two, bigger wheels. The robot's wheels are a bit bigger now to speed it up, provide better ground clearance, and to add more room for error on the height of the servos. This means that, while recommended, gluing them down should not be a necessity. Number three, taller chassis. I ended up adding 1 8 inch to the chassis height to add room to route wires internally, and also for the rest of the electronics. It was just packed way too tight with the LiPo in place for me to see the receiver fitting in there and all the motor wires were bent at terrible angles. This extra space should serve to open up ESC and LiPo options a little bit. 4. Front Attachment Retention Gone are the three dowel pinholes since the lid can now overlap the front attachments on top, allowing for a much simpler swapping method. 5. ESC Choices Upon testing the weapon setup, it definitely draws under 10 amps continuously at full speed, meaning instead of a 30 or 35 amp ESC, potentially smaller 12 amp ESCs could be used. I have yet to buy and test those, however, so more to come on that. Personally, I'll probably stick with the 35 amp BL Heli 32s I already have, but you can probably get away with 12 amp with the caveat that startup still draws more than 12 amps, so you might want to be extra careful when you're it's testing or fighting really with fast, it. So this weapon isn't quite as 6. Servo mounting options. You can see in my slice print here showing the new taller chassis, the servo mount snapped off on one side. They were too stiff to bend out of the way. I've since changed this so that area should flex much more easily. This probably won't happen with nylon or PETG to begin with, but it's worth making sure. 7. Lid adjustments. Like I said, the front lip sticks out to overlap the front now. I also realized only after printing out the parts and having them in my hands that you can't actually put the lid on the robot with the motor mounted because the hole that I had left for the uh, motor to stick through was too small for the gear attached to it, so I fixed that in the CAD. This was a case where I fell into the easy trap of, it fits in CAD so it must work in real life. Obviously this uh, wasn't reflected in some of the previous comparison screenshots, so here's some updated ones. Number 8. Motor mounting screw positions. I had to change the motor mounting from flathead to normal screws to fit the ones the motor came with. I also found the GrabCAD model for this motor that I had found had the holes wrong. They're 16 by 19 millimeters in reality like many other small brushless motors, but the model had 16 by 16 millimeters, which is wrong. That meant instead of being able to rotate it any of 90 degree orientations, I could only rotate it by 180 degree orientations, which meant I had to choose between a front slash back wire route or a left slash right wire route, and I chose left to right to put less strain on the motor wires. So what's my process for testing and determining problems and fixes? Well, mostly just throw parts of the bot together and test each system independently and see what might need to be improved. It's usually a great idea to test the drive and weapon systems in isolation from one another, because that way, if you have an issue, it's much easier to track down. This is extra important where electronics problems are a possibility. It's still important to test everything together, of course, but if fixing your drive problem means making changes that affect the weapon system, you'll want to know before you spend the time and money on the weapon parts. You saw my drive-only tests if you watched my servo conversion tutorial, and you saw a portion of my weapon tests in my recent 3D printing video. Here's some more on that now. One of the gears printed in nylon right now. This is all this red stuff is PLA, and the black is alloy 910 nylon. So the uh, helical gears have been working well, except that when I was testing this, this uh, this bolt is way longer than the actual one will be. This is like an inch and a quarter, and the actual one will be like seven eighths of an inch. Um, so there's all this empty space, so the thing will like push up when it's slowing down, and then pull down when it's spinning up because of the helical gear forces. Um, that'll be mitigated when in reality I use the shorter bolt and it's like this, then it can't go anywhere. Um, and I can also test it with spacers, but I was just really lazy, I could just add spacers on top. So right now, I can just pretty much stick this in here and screw it in. 
just like that, and then bam. That's the weapon setup. And it's quite nice, actually. I'm surprised the 3D printed threads inside of this part um, were so easily able to be tightened down, even just by hand with this thing, it, and it does not vibrate loose or come out at all. It's pretty good. So this is basically how I was testing it. I just had the motor wires sticking out like that. You can see there's, there's tons of clearance, obviously, between the chassis and the blade. So I'm, there's like literally no way that this blade could flex and hit the chassis. There's like a freaking inch in between them. But at the same time, it's probably not the safest thing ever to have the weapon spinning up while the electronics just spilled out. So in my later tests, I actually double-sided taped the chassis to the floor of the test box. And that way it couldn't like spin all over the place like it was in my first test. So you can see here I've done a lot of 3D printed prototyping for Mini Ultra thus far. Um, this is the first chassis slice version that I printed, followed closely by this one just to test the fit of a uh, servo retention system using these um, little like clips basically. I've printed a bunch of different versions of the wheels with different spacing between the actual servo spline and the uh, tire section of it and stuff like that. I've ended up deciding to actually make the wheels even larger and move to uh, something this size. Um, and then I have a couple versions of these as well. Um, so right now where I'm at is a combination of this and this. So this is a slice of the latest version of the chassis that I've designed. This was the fully this is a printed version of basically what I showed in my last video, except that I have a link in here. You can see I prototyped the link system a couple times. Um, I just measured the difference between where it was sitting and where I wanted it to be sitting. So if I line these up, you can kind of tell how much uh, further I moved it. And then this actual printed version, I believe is, oh, it's actually the other one, isn't it? Got that backwards. Yeah, the actual printed version is precisely the shorter one. So the link sticks out a little further. So you can pull it out pretty easily, push it in with some pliers to get it nice and flush if you really want it perfect. But um, And then this will just fold flat against the chassis. I can just tape it there or something so it doesn't get knocked out in combat. Um, you can see I made a slight wiring harness here so I can connect a LiPo and a speed controller to it, but I don't have a speed controller that properly fits in here yet, and I don't have the BECs to run with it yet, so I haven't really been able to prototype the full robot driving around. Um, what I have done is I've tested the weapon setup, as you see it here, the motor only held in with two screws because I can't fit screws in those two holes. You can see the screw holes don't line up at all with where they are in the chassis because those are 16 millimeter apart holes in the chassis and 19 millimeter apart holes in this thing. That's one of the reasons I, I printed out something like this. Um, you can also see these are countersunk in the chassis version, but I'm using um, regular screw heads that aren't flat heads. So this is a version that I printed of the motor mount just to test it out where I have the 16, 19 spacing and also their counter board instead of countersunk so that the screw heads will actually sit flush and hopefully I won't need these washers. So the whole process is a lot of design, build, test, repeat. For a mostly printed bot, the build process is quick and easy, so I can be a lot more experimental with my choices and change lots at once, but the process extends to any of my robots. For each new type of bot, I'm figuring things out as I go along. That kind of problem solving is what makes all the difference. Once I have the BECs and receivers on hand, I'll test fit them in the existing chassis, and then I'll make whatever changes are needed in CAD. Then I'll print the new one and repeat. Ideally, I can then fit all of the electronics inside at once. I'm still stuck waiting for parts for this robot, so next week I'll probably be talking about a different side project I've started recently. If you'd like to see that, I'll be posting sneak peeks on Instagram, and be sure to like and subscribe here too. Thanks for watching!